Selected in Photoshop number 8, Color Range. The Color Range function can make a selection based on a specific color or on tones and we'll use it to change the color of this flower. So we go to Select, Color Range and in this dialog box there are a number of options. We're going to select the color red, that's all. Click OK and it makes our selection. It doesn't appear to have selected the whole flower but in fact it does. It's just a fair bit of latitude with this, uh, with this type of selection. We'll change the color with a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And our selection immediately gets put onto the mask. Now we can adjust the hue. See how the color changes. We'll make it a bit of a mauve color around there. A bit more saturation. Make it look a bit richer. And there we are. Quite a simple way of changing the color. This can be good for correcting or changing skin color without affecting anything else. With this image we're going to change the autumn leaves to summer green. So once again go up to select color range and we're going to choose sampled colors. The fuzziness slider it doesn't mean softness as in feathering but the fuzziness will increase the tolerance of the selection. A lower setting means not so many shades of the selection will be included. But here we're going to push it up to 200 and with the eyedropper click on one of the yellows in the mid range of tones. If we click on the selection button here we get a preview, a small preview of what it's going to look like. A larger preview we have various options here grayscale, black, we'll choose white matte. This shows us what's going to be included in the selection. We'll OK that, marching ants all over the place. Once again, hue and saturation, it creates its own mask already. And we adjust the hue, take it over to the green. It's quite a rich green. We'll increase the saturation a little bit. There we are. And very quickly we've changed that autumn scene into a summer scene. An alternative method, let's get rid of that, go back to the beginning. This time we'll use the fuzziness slider. Select color range, a high fuzziness, more gets included, a lower fuzziness, less gets included. And we can use the eyedropper tool to make our selection. So this is more of a manual approach. With the eyedropper, click on one of the yellows, that starts us off. Hold down the shift key, now we can add to that selection. Click on a different tone. We don't want to click on too many, otherwise it'll start eating into the other uh, material. If you think you've included too much, hold down the Alt key, click on a tone, and that tone range will be taken out of the selection. And with the fuzziness slider, and looking at the preview, we can judge, with a bit of practice, just what's being selected. Then we click OK. Here are the marching ants. We go to an adjustment layer of hue and saturation and we adjust again to get our nice green. As much saturation as we want. That's too strong. Out there, there's a good rich colour. We can close that. And here we have a selection again with a bit more of a manual approach. If there are one or two items that have been left behind, still haven't been included, we can adjust the mask with a brush. Let's go to a brush, white on top, so we press X with a white brush. We'll have a low brush, about 20%, and brush out over those yellow marks that we don't want. Another one here, little one there. Otherwise our selection has been pretty good and we seem to have converted all the yellow into a nice summer green. Another useful function in Color Range is its ability to select tones. If we go up to Select Color Range and click down to Highlights for example, it can select the highlights or the midtones or the shadows of an image. If we want to do something to one of those regions, it can isolate that region for us. 
Now here the highlights are okay and the shadows are okay but the midtones are rather drab they could do with an extra bit of contrast so I'll go to select the midtones we can see what it's selecting here in the little preview image click OK and the marching ants select everything if we add a curves adjustment layer the mask reveals just the midtones and we can make an adjustment which affects them doesn't affect the highlights and it doesn't affect the shadows so here we are boosting up contrast in just that mid-tone area that's what it was before that's what it is now it could be you just want to darken the sky so select the highlights it will select the sky area and you can adjust that and nothing else this facility can also be used as a special effect to create a graphic image so let's try it on this image go to select color range I'll start off by selecting the highlights OK and I'll create a new layer by clicking on the new layer button at the bottom here and choose a color I'm going to make the highlights orange I think OK and now fill it with alt backspace cancel that selection the main image active select color range again this time I'll select the midtones create a new layer and this color well I'll keep that blue as the sky is pretty blue already fill that with blue alt backspace cancel that selection once again select color range and this time the shadows and I'll make these well some of this lighthouse is dark red so I'll use a dark red again new layer fill that with the dark red no it's too light I'll make a slightly darker red okay cancel that selection now we can change the modes change the mode of this one with the shift equal signs we can scroll through the modes until there's something that looks appealing now I'll go for that darker color one up here the midtones same again Oops. Oh dear. Well, that was a dark, stormy night. That's overlay. Now the highlights. Same again. Well, you can play around like this as long as you like, just to get an effect you want. I'll leave it like that for now. So you can get quite a few different graphic effects. This is better than posterization. With posterization you can't control the colors but here you've got complete control of the colors and you can make it as wild or as subtle as you like. Here's another example of it finished. There's one more function in color range and that is detect faces and it aims to select skin tones. We'll go to select color range and drop down to skin tones we can adjust the fuzziness looking at the preview trying to get rid of all the unwanted matter it doesn't seem to be doing it too successfully let's try OK it's selected some of the skin but plenty of bits we don't want let's deselect that and try the manual version select color range firstly we click localize color clusters and then detect faces and we'll have selection preview in quit mask mode both sliders now become active. The fuzziness slider, as we know, controls the range of colors included in the selection. And the range slider controls the proximity of the colors selected. So with these two, we can narrow down the selection. We'll lower the fuzziness first to get rid of any unwanted bits. It's the skin tones we're interested in. And we'll do the same with the range. So you're looking at the selection preview, see how the selection is restricted. Trouble is, this really doesn't work very well. So we click OK, and what have we got? It's selected some of the skin, but there are parts of hair we don't want. And it's missed out all the shoulder here and all the shadow bits here. 
and a little bit on the front here on the chest. I find it pretty hopeless, I never use it. Colour range is best for sampled colours, the saturated colours, and the tones like highlights, mid tones, and shadows. That's it then.